They are here, they are finally here and I get to talk about them and those are the AMD Ryzen 39 and 3700X chips and my god are they beautiful. Now AMD has been pretty open with these chips and the architecture and a load of other stuff already so I'm not going to go into too much detail and I'll actually leave that to the articles from people like Ian Kutcher from Anantec who do a much better job of explaining a lot of the technical details than I can so feel free to go check those out but I want to cover a few quick points first. First off we have to talk about clock speeds and core counts. Now the 3900X is the, the monster 12 core here with 24 threads. It has a a base clock of 3.8 gigahertz and boosts all the way up to 4.6 although the all core boost is more like 4 to 4.4 depending on what application you're in. The 3700X is the more normal 8 core with 16 threads. The base clock is 3.6 gigahertz and boosts up to 4.4 and you can actually find it boosting to 4.4 on all cores in certain applications. Cash wise these have double the last generation's amounts with the 3900X coming in at 64 megabytes of L3 cache and the 3700X coming in at 32. AMD have claimed that this gives up to 20% performance improvement in games just thanks to doubling the cache alone, so that's pretty sweet. Also on the RAM speed side of things, they've done a really good job and worked rather hard to be able to decouple the Infinity Fabric speed from the RAM speed, uh, especially at higher frequencies. So technically speaking, Ryzen can now benefit from up to five gigahertz RAM, which is just incredible and something that we really didn't see in the last couple of generations. Uh, AMD's recommended speed right now for RAM is actually 3600 megahertz at cast latency 16 so if you can pick up a kit of that for these new chips that's really the sweet spot. And finally these chips now support PCIe Gen 4. This is only available on X570 motherboards and is kind of pointless for GPUs right now since we really don't bottleneck a PCIe Gen 3 connection but for SSDs as you'll see in a video coming up in the next couple days of this incredible hunk of copper which is an ARS 2 terabyte NVMe Gen 4 SSD and how insanely fast this thing is, uh, you, you see that for SSDs it's kind of worth it. So performance, we have to talk about the synthetic result first as that kind of lays the groundwork for where the results are going to be for the rest of the tests and the synthetic one I'm using here is Cinebench R20. You can see that the single core performance here for the two new chips is almost identical to Intel's 9900K which is really their flagship when it comes to single threaded performance. In multi-threaded performance, it comes really close to both chips beating the 900K, and while of course the 3700X is actually a good bit cheaper than the 9900K, it's uh, actually rather close there too. Now synthetic benchmarks are all good, but we should take a look at gaming results too because they are pretty impressive. I should mention that if you want to see any more numbers for the, the test results, especially other resolutions that I tested at, or the minimums, or 1% lows for example with Battlefield 5, then you can check out the link to the website article down below where all of that information is laid out for you. Starting off with Battlefield 5, testing with a 2080 Ti at 1080p, you can see that the two new Ryzen chips are basically on par with Intel's 9900K, whereas the last generation 2700X is a good bit behind. This is with DirectX 12 on, but DXR off by the way. In Apex Legends with everything maxed out at 1080p, we're looking at pretty consistent results across the board, although this is mostly because with VSync off, Apex Legends actually has an FPS cap, and so I'm going to be doing a lot of retesting with Apex with the FPS cap disabled, but I wanted to give those results since that's how most people will play it. When it comes to PUBG or Battlegrounds on Ultra settings, we're looking again at pretty similar numbers across the board for both the new two Ryzen chips and Intel's 9900K, with the 2700X being a consistent considerable bit slower again. When it comes to Fortnite, again on epic settings with multi-core rendering enabled, again we're looking at a pretty close result, there's a little bit of a bigger gap between the 3700X and the 9900K this time, but it's certainly a good bit higher than even the last gen 2700X. Now we've seen that the gaming results are pretty good, but we should also talk about productivity. I did a 10 minute Premiere Pro render with uh, effectively just 4K, uh, 30 megabyte per second clips, uh, all rendered at the uh, 4K high quality preset in Adobe Media Encoder, and then measure the amount of time that it took to render those clips using only the CPU. Now do bear in mind this isn't necessarily a perfectly real world example because you would generally have GPU acceleration on, but it's also not a fair test of CPUs if you've got GPU acceleration, so bear with me here. 
When we take a look at those results, we can see that the 2700X, the last generation chip, is just incredibly slow compared to even the newer 3700X, which is obviously the same sort of price point. When it steps up to the 12 core though, it's absolutely insane and smashes everything, including the 9900K. So what's the conclusion here then? Well, it's probably a similar one that you've heard from a lot of reviewers today, and that is that frankly, these chips are amazing. The fact that their single threaded performance is caught up to Intel and in some cases slightly surpasses it, and their multi-threaded performance is absolutely incredible, and for the same sort of price point as the 9900K, which is eight cores and 16 threads, you can get a 12 core, 24 thread monster that is absolutely amazing for productivity and still fits in the same board that a quad core does. Now there is one spanner in the works here and that's the X570 motherboards. Mostly due to the PCIe Gen 4 support, these boards are incredibly expensive. To give you an example, I have the X570 master board from Gigabyte here that I did some testing on, and I'm gonna be doing a review of that fairly shortly, but uh, to compare its price, which is gonna be around about 400 pounds to the Z390 version, which is the board that you would get if you're going for the 9900K, uh, that board is only about 250, so a pretty big price difference there. Now don't worry, too much because if you don't want to use these absolutely insane and still pretty expensive M.2 SSDs then you generally don't need an X570 board right now especially because most X470 boards should be getting support and BIOS updates for these newer chips and so while it might be a bit of a hassle especially the more premium X470 boards they should still be able to handle the 12 core no problem and so you can go with that if you want to save a bit of money. So would I put one of these in my rig? I think the answer hands down is yes. If I dropped in the 3700X with a BIOS update for my board, I would get a pretty significant performance advantage, not only in gaming, but also in productivity. And if I went for the 12 core or the soon to be upcoming 16, uh, which is really the one I have my eye on as a content creator and gamer, uh, that would just be absolutely insane. And hypothetically, I could drop it in my old board with a BIOS update too. I really can't recommend these chips enough, especially for the price points they're at. I'm really excited to see what Intel has in terms of a response for this. Obviously, they've got the 9900KS that's coming out that might get a little bit closer to beating the 3800X in terms of its performance, but when it comes to the 12 core, I don't think that a few extra megahertz in terms of your boost clock is gonna do too much when you have four extra cores and the same sort of uh, single threaded performance. With that said though, those are my thoughts. I would love to hear yours in the comments down below. Are these chips something that you're planning on picking up? Are you happy with the performance gains that these have seen? Or would you like to see more? Are you a bit disappointed? Or are you just very impressed? Anything at all, let me know in those comments down below. And of course, I'm gonna leave links to both of these chips in the description down below if you wanna check them out and see pricing when and where you watch this, cause it will vary. Do bear in mind that these have only just launched as of this video going up, and so some sites might not have them listed yet, and so do bear that in mind. Otherwise though, if you're interested in seeing more content on these chips, including overclocking videos, streaming comparisons, the SSD review, motherboard reviews, and the new Navi cards that also launched today, then do make sure you're subscribed with a bell notification icon because more videos will be coming out very shortly, including tomorrow, Tuesday, uh, there will be another video on Wednesday, but not necessarily Ryzen related, and then throughout the next coming weeks and actually probably months when it comes to motherboards and stuff like that. Otherwise, if you want to support the channel and keep me making these videos on a Monday, Wednesday, and Friday basis, then take a look at the links in the description down below. There's an Amazon and Overclock UK affiliate link, so whether you're buying these brand new and rather awesome Ryzen CPUs, or whether you're buying garden sheds on Amazon, it all helps and doesn't cost you anything. There's also merch if you want to pick up hoodies or t-shirts like this one, or a load of other designs, and you can check out the the rest of the links like private internet access which is a great and cheap VPN or Humble Bundle to buy cheap games and support charities too. There's also plenty of other videos over there that you can keep watching if you fancy and otherwise that is kind of it. If you have any questions feel free to leave those in the comments down below and we'll see you in the next video.